Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Today, let's talk about another interesting open source project, which can run on the Raspberry Pi, for example, but on any other computer as well, that you can also buy assembled. Link is in this video's description. I'm talking about the ELSE Mesh Synthesizer, which in short converts every node in a network into a synthesizer, which then can be controlled remotely. And if that sounds interesting to you, please join me in this video. Here we go. So, one of my viewers brought this project by Brian Whitman to my attention. The ELS Mesh Synthesizer, named after Hal ELS, who built the first digital synth back in the early 70s, is a small box containing a microcontroller, a battery, and a speaker, and they're all interconnected by a Wi-Fi network. Each box runs a synthesizer software that can create sounds by using virtual analog Carpro Strong FM and Sample Sound engines. Once set up, you can control the synths in the mesh with a programming backend like Max, Pure Data or Python. All synths can be synchronized precisely, but they're not meant for playing back live music played on keyboards. The intended way to use them is with a script of instructions. You can buy these lovely looking speakers over at Brian Whitman's homepage, which are linked in this video's description, but you can also download the source code and compile it on one of your microcomputers. And in this video, I'm going to do exactly that and show you how to create your own musical scripts. For this, I'm going to use my Raspberry Pi 800 and my Raspberry Pi 3B. Each of them will use an external audio interface and that's all the hardware we need today, really. As always, make sure your Raspberry Pi operating system is up to date. Then, git clone the ELSE repository to your home directory. Now, change the main directory inside the ELSE folder and the make to compile the software. If the build fails on Raspberry Pi, edit the make file and then add the minus LDL parameter to the line starting with libs. Save this, try again, and this time the build should succeed. Now, start the software by typing dots slash ELSE. This program should automatically detect your audio hardware, create a mesh network and then just sit there waiting for your instructions. In this video, I'm going to use the Python programming language to transmit these instructions, as that's how the excellent documentation over on the project's homepage is explaining this. As the synths use a very short form coded instruction set for receiving commands, you can really use any language you like to control them. On the manual page for the Amy synth, you'll find a table displaying all the codes and commands and the parameters and what they do. I once again have to point out that this documentation is absolutely incredible and by far the best open source documentation I've seen while running this channel. Let's just open the code editor that comes with your Raspberry Pi as it's quick and has Python support built in. First, let's try to play a bass drum sound. So create a new Python file, save it inside the ELSE directory and begin with importing ELSE and the time library. Next, we'll reset the synth. We'll also round up all synths in our network to send individual instructions to each one later. So, creating one sound is really easy. Use the send command. This command can take a lot of parameters, but we'll define the oscillator voice, the synth engine, velocity and a patch number. The L synth has up to 64 voices of polyphony, so OSC equals zero refers to the first voice in that set. Ls.pcm is a sample playback engine. Velocity determines the volume of that sound, with one being the maximum, and the patch number tells the synth we want to hear a bass drum. And after that, we just reset the synth again. Save this and then open a new terminal window. Make sure your ELSE instance is still running in the other terminal window and then change to the ELSE directory once again and type Python 3 in the file name you just chose. You should now hear a single bass drum sound on the speaker connected to your Raspberry Pi. 
Right, now let's play a simple dance floor beat. For this I'll define a sequence of notes in an array. One is bass drum, six is a hi-hat sound and five is a snare drum sound. Now let's create a simple loop that runs for 400 steps. Make it so that every step moves a pointer through our array of notes using the modular operator and then pause for a quarter second and then continue with the loop. Also make sure there are no syntax errors and then you get this result. Now let's add a bass line. For that we need to set up another oscillator, this time using the virtual analog synth. So the line I'm typing here calls for saw wave with a low pass filter attached to it. Next I'll set up breakpoint, which you can understand as an envelope of sorts. Each oscillator can have up to 8 breakpoints, which allows for pretty complex envelopes. Here I'm calling for an envelope that begins with half the filter frequency, then moves to 0 over 100 milliseconds, or releases within 25 milliseconds. In the main loop, we now need to play the notes on oscillator 1. Let's begin with a fixed note first, which gives us this result. And now let's create a short melody. Once again, create an array and then move through that over and over again using the modular operator. Now we've got this. And this is not deep enough for a bass line, so let's subtract two octaves from the note value here. And now we've got this result. I guess you know where we're heading here. The right moment for a shout out to my viewer ARP78, who figured this out by just looking at the source code. My hat's off to you, sir. Oh, by the way, if you like content like this, and if you want to see more open source stuff in the future on this channel, please consider subscribing now. Seeing the subscriber numbers grow makes me happy and keeps me motivated to push out a new video every week or so. And if you want to support what I'm doing here financially, you can become a channel member using the button under this video, or join my Patreon. Link is in this video's description. Thank you very much. And now we need to do the chords. As a chord is made up from three notes, we'll need to set up three more oscillators. Just copy and paste the lines you already wrote three times and then assign them to oscillator two, three and four respectively. For the chord progression, I'll just create an array of four arrays, each one containing three note values. The chord stabs in this particular song are on the 1 and 4, so we need to set up that conditional statement once again using the modulo operator. Now let's introduce a counter that will increment each time one chord has been played. Then add the lines that play the notes of the current chord using our extra oscillators. Then add 1 to the counter and once it's above 3, go back to the start. Once again, fix any syntax errors and run the program and then we've got this. Okay, the last thing I want to do here is to play the chords on the second synth while the drums and bass are played back on the first synth. So start the LZAP on the second Raspberry Pi and wait for it to join the network. Then just add the client parameter to each of the commands on a Python script. As requested, drums and bass commands will exclusively run on client 0 and the chords will be played on client 1. And with this, we arrive at the final result. I've got this mixer here to show you everything works as expected. Of course, there's a lot of more things you can do here, but I'll leave those for you to discover yourself. I'll put all the links necessary in this video's description, and if you like this project, please remember to support its creator, Brian Whitman, by, for example, buying one of the PCBs or a finished speaker, or perhaps giving a donation. This simple form of positive feedback is immensely important to creators and the best way to say thank you.
Yeah, and that's it for today. The ELS Mesh Synthesizer, a network synthesizer system suited for running art installations, for example, but probably there are many more use cases. Really depends on what you want to do. So if you found this interesting and useful, please consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.